Good morning. This is a follow-up to the irons video where I went round with this four iron badly because my setup stinks and my swing stinks. But I didn't lose a ball. I didn't go out of bounds. Uh, I wasn't chipping out of the trees. I didn't go in any water. I managed to get it round. I managed to get the same ball round nine holes despite some of the holes being quite long. Now I got a comment and I gave a rather abrupt reply which I'd like to apologize for because it, uh, that isn't what I should be doing is it really to people who make the effort to comment but the, the, the comment was you're giving poor advice high handicappers should not be hitting long irons And the thing is, the guy who made that comment is 95% correct. Let me explain why he is 95% correct. I'm at the Herefordshire, there's 550 members inside these walls. And if I was to ask every single member, are long irons difficult to hit for people who shoot 105? I think 99.9% .9 of them would say yes and they'd be correct. And the reason they would be correct and why the gentleman in my comments is correct is because you can do what you believe you can do and you can't do what you believe you can't do. So if you think this is a difficult club to hit and is gonna result in, a, get a poor result out of it, you're correct. So if I was to go down to the sixth today with that mental mindset that I cannot hit this club and it's what it's about 168 yards it's uphill there's a front bunker so I need a four iron to reach that to land on the surface of the green if I don't think I can do it and if the 105 shooter think, doesn't think they can do it, and if the 550 members inside these walls don't think they can do it, they are correct. They can't do it. I don't like negatives on a golf course. If you stand on this first tee and you look out there at the trees on the right and the trees on the left and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to go in the trees on the right, I can't. I've got no shot from there, I'm going to be in real trouble. If your mind is on the trees on the right, guess where the goddamn golf ball goes? It goes in the trees on the right. Oh, don't go in the water, don't go in the water. You're going in the water. Negative mental thinking destroys your golf. And the reason why it destroys your golf is because it turns in, the mental turns into physical. The trouble with long irons is from the very moment that you take up the game people will tell you that these are difficult to hit. Everybody in here, even, perhaps even James the Pro will tell you long irons are difficult to hit. The question is why? Well if you roll up to that sixth tee knowing that you've got to hit this the one time in the round that this thing is actually going to come out of the bag and you haven't actually picked it up in a month you're going to have fear you're going to have fear of the club you're going to have fear of the shot you're going to have fear of the result what does that do well it makes you grip the club a little bit tighter than normal when you grip the club you paralyze your wrists so you can't make a decent swing. You pump up these two muscles tight so you can't make a swing. The other thing you do is, hello. The other thing that you do is you wanna get this thing over and done with as quickly as you can. You wanna get this shot that you're afraid of, this club that you're afraid of, you want it over and done. You want to get this thing out of your hand. You want to hit it and go. And you also swing too hard. 
Now here's the bizarre thing. If I give you a seven iron, it's got a certain amount of loft, it's got a certain length shaft and a certain amount of backswing, uh, backspin. So the ball's only going to go a certain distance. If I give you a four iron, we've got a longer shaft, so that's more club head speed. We've got less loft, the flight's going to be lower. We've got less backspin, so it's going to go through the air further. With exactly the same effort as your seven iron, I promise you, this will go further. There's absolutely no reason for you to attempt to swing faster and harder. The ball's going to go further with exactly the same effort. Now, if I was to take you down to the sixth, and it was playing an eight iron today for whatever reason, it was 135 yards. They've moved the tee up, it's 135 yards. You pick your eight iron. You're not going to be afraid of that club. You're not going to be afraid of the result. You're not going to squeeze the life out of the club and destroy your swing. You're not going to play the shot faster. You're not going to swing harder. So that assistant pro who told me, put your woods away, and go out with your 21 degree three iron and play with that did exactly the right thing with me. He wanted me to overcome the fear of long irons. And it worked, I, I'm not afraid to hit this. I know that sometimes I'm gonna hit it poorly because I'm a handicapped golfer, I'm gonna hit it poorly. Hell, I hit my eight iron poorly, I hit my wedge poorly. I hit every club in the bag poorly from time to time but there is no reason why I should be afraid of this. There's no reason why the members of this club should be afraid of this. There's no reason why you should be afraid of this. You've got to overcome the mental so that the physical works properly. That this works as well as your eight iron. And you're not afraid of your eight iron, are you? You're only afraid of this thing. Now I got another comment which was, people use driver because it's easier to hit. What does that actually mean? Why is it easier to hit? I'll say it's more forgiving. If you hit this club a little off center, or low down, or high on the face, you're not gonna get a good result out of it, especially as this one's a a blade and doesn't have the cavity back sort of weight distribution. But why is this easier to hit? Well, we got a big face for stars. The face is rolled side to side and top to bottom. So if you hit it off center, you're going to get some gear effect to try and bring the ball back to where you're actually aiming. The weight distribution is such that it brings the weight down and back, which gives stability. So when you do hit it off center, it's not going to twist as much as perhaps an iron might. The face now is quite forgiving. Although the center of the face is regulated to a certain level of performance, What's been happening is round the outside of the face has been getting more forgiving. So you get a little bit more out of hitting it high toe or low heel, but you, it'll never be as good as the middle of the face. So it's more forgiving, but is it easier? Well, it's on a two inch tee peg. So you don't have to interface with the ground in order to hit the ball. But you can still come down, hit it off the top here, to come down too steep into the ball. And you can still sway away from the ball, so then you're catching it off the bottom edge instead of the middle. And instead of a 38 and a half inch shaft, it's got a 45 inch shaft. In fact, if you buy this year's model, they're practically all 
46 inch shafts. What that means is you can have the exact perfect setup. You can aim exactly the direction that you want the ball to go in. You can shoulders, hips, feet, everything square. You can have a perfectly neutral grip and you can still slice the nuts off the ball. Because this thing is so long, it is much harder to time. And with the, 40, with the 45 and the 46 inch driver, it is very easy to leave this club head a little behind and that face open. And because you've got more speed with this, because you're going at 95 miles an hour instead of 85 miles an hour, and you've got considerably less backspin. You might have 2,000 RPM of backspin instead of 4,000. There's a relationship between backspin and side spin. The more backspin you have, the less the side spin influences the ball. You try slicing a nine iron. All that's gonna happen with an open club face is it goes up. You might move it a six or seven feet left to right with that open club face. But with this, with an open club face, with so little backspin, the side spin takes over and you lose balls and you go out of bounds. So some of these shots that I played where I'm aiming poorly and I'm swinging very poorly and I'm hitting it damn well sideways, I still had my ball with the four iron. If I had hit those exact shots with this, with the same over the top steep swing, with the same open club face, I've added six shots to my score as in penalties on the front nine. And if I did exactly the same on the back nine and lost another three balls, I'd have added another six shots of penalties. So instead of me being say 10 and 20 over par, I would have been 32 over par and I wouldn't have broken 100. So when you say this is easier to hit, it's certainly more forgiving because of the design of the head, but it is not easier to hit. It is not easier to get one golf ball from the first tee to the 18th green with this if you've got a fault the size of the fault that I have. If I do it with this, even though this head is small and the sweet spot is smaller, I got a 38 and a half inch shaft, I got an extra 2000 RPM of backspin, and I can't hit it far enough to lose it and get round the golf course with one ball. So which one's easier to hit? Cheerio. The aim here isn't too bad. It's only a little bit to the right. I should still hit the fairway. But I've taken it back and the club is inside. When you're inside, you're trapped. And the weak shot to the right with the driver, well, that's a lost ball. Aim here is pretty good. It doesn't look it, but the fairway is over towards that tree but I'm inside again. When you're inside, it is so difficult to square the club face. So we hit it right. That's another lost ball with the driver. The par three, I'm aiming so far left, it's unbelievable. Club is going inside again, but this time I managed to use my hands to square it up. So I've missed the left. Aim is good here for a four iron that you're intending to fade, five or ten yards. Club is going inside again. The inevitable result is you can't square the face, you come in shallow, and that would be a lost ball with the driver. <laughs> the par three. Aim is good because I am aiming for the left edge of this green to stay away from the trouble, but the club is going inside again. The inevitable weak shot, and I've missed the green short and right.